Welcome back to the channel. This is Jared at Three C's Recreation. This is our shop build. This is the 2022 390 Race Edition. I already have customers looking at it, so I'm not even sure that we're gonna get to ride it. But I did bring in a skid plate for it. So this is the TM Designs skid plate. I like to put a heavier duty skid plate on all of our bikes. There's a little bit more to be desired for the protection on the sides. The stock skid plate does give pretty good under protection, but it's just not as thick as the TM Designs. And we've been running a lot of plastic skid plates because I think they glide better over the rock. So if we had an aluminum skid plate and we, we gouge it into a rock, it kind of holds the bike more. We're, we're learning that the plastic lets it glide a little bit better. So we've been doing plastic and it flexes a little bit more. And this TM Designs has the linkage guard built in the bottom of it. Again, something that we've learned over time that once we had one with it, we saw how beat up this was and we're like, well, if this was that beat up, that's how beat up our linkage would have been. So what we're going to do is just install this um, quick skid plate. It's an easy install, but I think it's um, when you're spending 10 plus on a brand new bike, um, a couple more hundred dollars on a really good skid plate is not a big investment. So it's a really simple, all we have to do is remove the two bolts we have on the stock skid plate. We have the upper and the lower. It's just an eight millimeter. So we'll get the stock skid plate off and then we'll come right back. Another cool thing with this TM Design skid plate is it's given us two holes cut out for the drain plugs, which is awesome because the stock skid plate does not give us that. So every time we change the oil with the stock skid plate, we're taking it off. I still don't mind taking the skid plate off typically because um, oil does collect on the top of that and I want it to be clean. If I get to the race and oil is dripping off the top of this into the trailer, I panic a little bit and I don't, don't enjoy that. So I would like it to be perfectly clean every time I change it but at least they have it. If you're doing a quick oil change, it's easy to do. So now all we have to do is just hook this up into the front. There's gonna be a bracket that came with this. Get you guys situated a little bit here. The first thing we need to get into place is this is one of the back brackets. This is an addition to the stock two bolts. Uh, this is one of their TM Designs extra pieces. So they give you the two rubber grommets. We have to put those over the metal and it's gonna protect against the frame. And the easiest way to get in this in here is to come through the side. You will fight with it if you're just trying to put it in from the center and twist it in. It doesn't have a lot of room. So I have to bring it in from the side. And we're just going to set this in here. And now our goal is to line up these three bolts first. I do love to use never seize on everything. I don't want the bolt to get stuck in this forever. And this lives on an environment where it's always wet and dirty. So we will use never seize as we put these in. Now that we have the front three bolts in, we kept them loose. We'll move to the back and work back there. They have this replacement piece that goes in here. So over time, as this beats against the linkage, you can replace this. I forgot to put that on already. So we're gonna set it there. And you wanna have your, your bolts going up through because there's a cutout in the bottom. So that way it's, it's sticking up past so it's not gonna catch on the sticks or the rocks. So. We're gonna put that on there and we'll put the nut on the top and we'll tighten both of these down. The next part can be the most frustrating because this skid plate is not kind of pre-bent as much as I'd like it to be. I wish it was more of a kink in the front of it so it would line it up. So we are fighting against the front of the skid plate now to bring it up to line up. And then once you get close, it, it beats itself against the linkage in the directions, I read them this time, it shows that if we take a ratchet strap and we go from the rear wheel to the fender and they say from four to six inches, if we collapse this down, it'll help pull that up. So there's a less pressure here. I'm going to try that this time. We're going to hook that strap up real quick and we'll see how much that changes this linkage angle. By sucking the back of the bike down, it did help quite a bit actually. If I come back down here, set you guys up here, if I hold up on this, I'm pretty much just fighting the front of the skid plate. I can get that up in there really easily. I think that I can get that bolt started now. What's nice with the newer TM designs is I don't think that that plastic washer was kind of like held there. It's not, it's not one piece, it's moving around, but 
trying to hold that before and do all this was a pain in the butt. So at least now they're kind of sticking that to it. To get the most leverage, I'm going to use a socket with a ratchet on the end of it instead of the standard Allen key. I think I can hold this up better. And you can tell I'm using never seize because it's already all over the place. So we're good there. I'm going to try to push this up and get it tightened in. That worked out really good having a socket. I could apply a ton of pressure while I was twisting it and that let it catch the threads. So that is an install. And so what we're gonna do now is now that the back is in and tight, I'm gonna come back to the front and I'm gonna re-tighten down the front three bolts. Normally this kit would have come with another flush mount and one of their bolts, but I was missing one of the bolts in this kit. So what I'm gonna do, I just left the stock front one and that's okay with me. Really quick tip for you guys at home on my skid plates, I will end up cutting this down quite a bit right here. And the reason is I have a size 13 boot and in the past I've gone to grab the brake and it actually stops me sooner. And that's not a great feeling when you're on a downhill and you want that rear brake. So my last one was on a 300 two stroke. I will cut this down as if I end up keeping this bike, we'll cut this down quite a bit, but this does give a ton of protection and uh, I'm excited about riding it. So again, this was Jared at 3C's Recreation. Thanks for following along. If you're looking for beta parts, if you'd like one of these good plates, we can drop ship it right to your house. Give us a call at 3C's Recreation. I'd love to work with you. Enjoy the ride.